Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to equip you to be better prepared to share the gospel. Today, I'm joined by founder and president of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we are going to explore Earth's extraordinary water properties. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting me on. You know, Hugh, water is one of these compounds that people have seen have an extraordinary set of properties. It's it's not like there's a lot of liquids out that have them uh, have the properties that water does. Kind of walk us through some of just the the things that are more well known about water that make it particularly fit for a planet that wants to host life. Well, it's the only solvent that's available in the entire chemical spectrum that allows for the complexity of the carbon bondings that you need to make life possible, uh, also allows for the stability. I mean, water also has a unique property uh, that it takes a lot of energy to freeze it or to boil it. And so that means liquid water can be reasonably stable and that's well, crucial well, for well, life. That's, that's important for being here on earth because if it freeze or if freezed and melted earlier, you'd actually freeze up a lot of your water and that would be very detrimental to life in the oceans, which is where most life is here on Earth. Right, right. So what are some of the other important properties of water that we see here on Earth's surface? Well, we know we have these water cycles on our planet Earth and it's really thanks to the fact that water can easily evaporate from oceans and streams, go into the atmosphere and be able to liquefy there as rain and snow and fall upon the Earth. And that can happen in a very stable way where you don't have the water either accumulating on the earth or disappearing into outer space. I mean, it's really important for life on planet earth that we have a stable quantity of water at a just right level. Too much is a problem, too little is a problem. And we see it going away at a faster or slower rate. We also have a problem. Well, I, that, that, that cycle there also provides a great thermal or thermostat for the globe as well because of uh, the high heat capacity that you mentioned that water has. Well, that's true. I mean, we all get concerned about hurricanes, but hurricanes actually are a great thermostat. Uh, when the water gets too warm, they cool the water down. And so uh, that's important to maintain life in the oceans. So it seems like there's a lot of information out there about just the remarkable properties of water that we see on our surface. But one of the things that I find fascinating is that you're, you're highlighting some research that shows that the way water behaves down, e down deep inside Earth is also important. So what are some of those properties of, Earth that have, or of water that affect how the interior of Earth operates? Yeah, most people are aware of the water cycle that takes place in the surface and the atmosphere. I wrote this article to make the point, there's a second water cycle that's equally important. This is the deep water cycle, where we see water on the surface of the earth being drawn through the crust into the mantle, and then from the mantle uh, back up to the crust and the atmosphere. And if that were not going on, and if we didn't have this special chemistry where water is bonding to olivine to make serpentine, we wouldn't have the plate tectonics. And without the plate tectonics, we wouldn't be able to recycle the nutrients that are crucial for life here on planet Earth. So let's take a step back there. You mentioned olivine and serpentine. Kind of give us, what, what are those so that, uh, so that our viewers have a better understanding? There. Well, olivine is a dominant mineral within the mantle of the Earth, that layer between the core and the crust of the Earth. Um, but what happens is when water gets drawn down into the mantle through uh, colliding plates and one plate subducting underneath the other, this brings a certain kind of water into contact with the olivine, which establishes a reaction which produces a serpentine. And the serpentine is this hydrated olivine and operates in such a way as to make the tectonic plates move in just the right way so that we can continue to get continental buildup at the same rate that the continents are being eroded down. And also is crucial in establishing arcs of volcanoes. Uh, volcanoes, as I wrote in the article, are crucial for fertilizing uh, the continental land masses so we continue to grow a great supply of food. And they also play a critical role in compensating for the brightness of the sun. Because uh, you, know, you actually have uh, water being drawn into the earth. And as that happens, it's pulling carbon dioxide down with it. And the drawdown of carbon dioxide into the deep 
uh, mantle, uh, upper and lower mantle of the earth uh, actually allows the greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere to be drawn down at precisely the just right rate that the sun is getting brighter and brighter. And that explains why we've been able to have life on planet Earth in abundance for 3.8 billion years. So if I can recap what you're saying, you know, we, we've got a lot of evidence uh, that water is just remarkable and how the oceans, how the continents, how the uh, water rivers, the water cycle on the surface of the earth flows. But there's also water being drawn into the earth and it interacts with the minerals to facilitate plate tectonics, um, which build up continents as, as the water wears them down. Uh, but it also does it in a way that makes sure that the continents are built at the same rate they're being torn down and it impacts the atmosphere uh, so that the greenhouse heating is compensated properly because the sun's getting brighter. So you've got the surface effects, you've got the tectonic activity, and you've got the compensation for the atmosphere. All of this playing with these two different, the surface and the subsurface water cycle. Is that correct? <laughs> That's all correct, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's actually much more going on that makes possible our advanced life, like the cycling of the minerals so that we can sustain our civilization. You know, it's, it's, it's really remarkable, and I appreciate your comments, Hugh. Uh, you know, we think of water as being a run-of-the-mill, ordinary thing because it's just everywhere on Earth. But the more we investigate it, the more we see just how remarkably designed it is to host life, not just here on Earth, but probably anywhere in the universe. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's blog on this topic. It's titled, Earth's Deep Water Cycle is Designed for Life. You'll get some great tools that allow you to go out and share just how remarkably designed Earth is, and particularly Earth's water is, so that we can be here, how that points to a creator and how you can help other people know the creator who made us so that we can know him.